Hello everyone, Foxy here. Welcome to Mostly Mental. Today, I'd like to talk about a fun topic, partitions. Let's say we have five things that we want to split up. How many ways can we divide them into piles? Well, we can put all five of them in one big pile, or we could split them into two piles as four and one, or three and two. We could also split them into two and three, or one and four, but those are really the same thing, just in a different order, so we're not going to count those as separate. And we can also split them into three piles as three, one, one, or two, two, one, or we can split them into four piles as two, one, 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 or we could just put each coin into its own separate pile. And in total, that gives us seven ways to partition five objects. So we write that P of five is seven. Or, more generally, P of n is the number of ways to partition n. So, how do we calculate P of n? Well, the simplest way is just to arrange the coins in all possible ways and count them, but we're mathematicians. We want a clever and, more importantly, a systematic answer, not just brute force. Maybe we can find it in terms of smaller P of n? After all, if we take some of the coins out, we're still left partitioning the rest. So if the first part is 2, then we've still got 3 left to partition. And following that logic, we would expect that p of n is p of n minus 1, where the first part is 1, plus p of n minus 2, and so on. Well... Not quite. You see, if we do that, we end up double counting. For example, if the first part is 2, we end up with 2 plus 3 as one of our parts, and if the first part is 3, we end up with 3 plus 2. And so we're repeating ourselves and over counting. So we need to find a way of counting that doesn't do that. Well, one way we could do that is to make sure that we add of all our parts from largest to smallest. And to do that, we're going to need an extra parameter. So let's call p of n k the number of partitions uh, where the largest part is at most k. So for example, if we're looking at p of 5, 2, that's all of the partitions of 5 where the largest part is at most 2, which include this one, this one, and this one. So p of 5, 2 is 3. And our original p of n is just going to be p of n, n, since we're allowed to use parts as large as the whole pile. And so if we can use parts up to 5, all of these are fair game. Okay, well, then how do we find p of n, k? Well, there are two cases. Either the first part is k, or it isn't. And if it is k, then we've got n minus k things left to partition. And we can use another k, so we have p of n minus k, k. And if the first part isn't k, then we can just lower our bound. And so we've got p of n, k minus 1, since every partition with largest part k minus 1 is still valid. And so, just to work out an example here, uh, p of 5, 5 which is, again, p of 5, is going to be p of 0, 5, plus p 
of 5, 4. And p of 5, 4 is just going to be p of 1, 4 plus p of 5, 3, and so on. But maybe that's not the best way to simplify the problem. Maybe instead of looking at how big the parts are, we should be looking at how many we have. So let's call q of n k the number of partitions where there are at most k parts. So, for example, q of 5, 2 is going to include this one, this one, and this one, since those are the ones with one or two parts. And so, again, q of 5, 2 is 3. So, how do we find q of n, k? Again, there are two cases. Either there are k parts, or there aren't. If there are k parts, then all of the parts are at least one, so if we take that out, we're left with q of n minus k, k. And if there aren't k parts, then we can just simplify to um, we can just simplify to q of n k minus one. Huh. Those kind of look a lot alike. As in, they're the same formula. I wonder if there's some deeper connection there. To see it, we're going to need to look at these things called Ferrer's diagrams. Let's draw each partition as an arrangement of dots. We'll order the parts from largest to smallest, and we'll draw the dots for each part in a column. The magic happens when we take these diagrams and swap the rows and columns. That lets us pair up partitions. So these are paired, these are paired, these are paired, and this one actually gets paired with itself. Then any partition with largest part k is matched with the partition with k parts, and vice versa. So for example, this one here has largest part 4 and 2 parts, and it's paired with this one, which has largest part 2 and 4 parts. Then P and Q are really describing the same thing, just from opposite directions. P is talking about how many partitions there are with a given maximum height, and Q is talking about how many there are with a maximum width. As a side note, we can use these same sorts of diagrams to find other relations between partitions. For example, there are exactly as many ways to partition a number into parts that are all odd as there are to partition it into parts that are all different sizes. Why? Well, let's take some number and split it into odd parts, as shown. And then we'll draw our diagram with all of the parts centered vertically. And we can do that because odd numbers always have a center element. And then what we can do is take these L-shaped regions, as shown, and count the number of points within them. And here we get 9, 6, 4, 2, 1. And it's not too hard to show that all of these parts are going to be different, and that the process can be reversed. So starting from a collection of all different numbers, you can create another partition of 
odd numbers. And I recommend trying that as an exercise. But back to our original question, how can we find P of n? It turns out there is a way to describe it in terms of P of smaller n without the need for a second parameter. To do so, we're going to need to use Euler's pentagonal number theorem. So the generalized pentagonal numbers are numbers of the form g sub k is k times 3k minus 1 over 2 for any integer k, positive, negative, or 0. So for k equals 3, we have g of 3 equals 3 times 8 over 2, which is 12. And for k equals negative 2, we have g of negative 2 is negative 2 times negative 7 over 2, which is 7. And for partitions, Euler showed that p of n is p of n minus 1 plus p of n minus 2 minus p of n minus 5 minus p of n minus 7 plus p n minus 12 plus p n minus 15 and, and so on where all of these numbers here are the pentagonal numbers but what if we want to get the number directly without having to compute any of the smaller p of n's in the process well there's no nice formula that's going to spit out the exact number but we can get pretty close it turns out that p of n is roughly equal to e to the pi root two-thirds n, or more exactly, log of p of n is approximately pi root two-thirds n for very strict definition of roughly. Now, the explanation for all of these last few formulas requires a bit more heavy machinery than I can explain in one video. So, I'm planning a series of videos discussing combinatorics from the ground up. I hope you'll join me along the way. Oh, and this video is part of the Mega Fave Numbers project, where a bunch of people much more charismatic than I am talk about their favorite large numbers. So, I'll pick 190,569,292, which is the number of partitions of 100. Check out the details and the playlist below. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.